Okay, Pablo is uh, Pablo. Is the stage is yours. Yeah, I am ready. Okay. Um, can you can you view the slides? Yes. Frank, can you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, view the slides? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. First, uh, we want to thank the organization for its support and, and dedication in preparing its, uh, this great event. Uh, this is our second time at uh, NOHAT. Uh, I would have liked it to be with you there, but for personal reasons uh, it can be. Uh, luckily, Fran is there with you, and, and you can enjoy, uh, enjoy yourself together. Um, today, we bring you own LSP project, uh, a project done by Ideas Locas team for quite some time. Uh, Ideas Locas or Crazy Ideas is the team where Fran and, and, and I work. work. Uh, it's a small department where we do pre innovation and build ideas like the one we are, uh, we are here to present. Uh, on many occasions, uh, what we do is open source project and, and share it with the community. So, my name is Pablo. Uh, here you have some information about my bio. Uh, my partner is Fran Ramirez, who can be the in person. Um, uh, we want to recognize Marcos Rivera and Javier Del Pino, who collaborated with the Only Speed project in its beginnings or its final part. So, before we start talking about the project, we wanted to, to tell you, you how the idea started. A few years ago, uh, we developed a tool called, called the OTD Pound. This tool, this tool allowed it to emulate adversary attacks according to some techniques, tactics, and procedures described in Mitre's evidence key matrix. This matrix lets organization know the, what threats they face and issue the, the security controls. And this was the objective of the ATD pounds, and this tool has nothing to do with artificial intelligence. Uh, but this tool made us think. Um, a year and a half ago, we conceived that a knowledge matrix could be able for creating AY algorithms. Uh, at the beginning of the idea, we were with Marco Rivera and colleagues uh, of Ideas Locas. Uh, also, Javier Del Pino has particip participated in the project. Um, we are proud to plant a seed uh, so that tomorrow this knowledge matrix about uh, evaluation test in AY algorithms will continue to grow. Um, in recent years, um, artificial intelligence has gained relevance in, in world of civil security, actually not only in the civil security world, teaching um, AY to detect the network anomalies or teaching AY to detect possible phishing via mall are just some, some examples. The Ideas Locas team has been working on these topics. Um, mainly, we have been working for a long uh, time with the fakes, understanding them, knowing them, seeing the risk they pose to society uh, if they are wrongly used on, and so on. We have worked on learning about the evolution of the CO scan for those we, who don't know it, uh, the, the CO scam uh, is one is where an attacker impersonated the CEO of a company and since him and since sends an email to to those responsible for accounting with the aim that they they make a, a money transfer. Logically, it's false and is theft uh, or scam. We have studied how the, the fakes evolve into the CO scam, and this scam becomes through the use of a neural networks using video and, and audio. Knowing this risk has made us work on understanding the defense methods for detecting the fakes, focusing on the physiological threats of the, the human being, blinking, healthy. Uh, there is a large number of studies uh, that support this. Uh, there are other detection methods, such as, for example, detecting the blinking of a, a human begins and eyes against uh, the machine and, and the heartbeat reflecting on the on the skin. So, going back to the project we are here today and, and seeing the importance uh, of artificial intelligence and its possible uses to improve cyber security, we have to say that OMSP is a knowledge matrix that hosts different tests to evaluate the reliability and, in some cases, 
the security of AI algorithms. We wanted not to say only in the knowledge matrix grouping of the test, but also to create small tools that allow us to evaluate in, in practice what the knowledge matrix tells us. In our IDF broadcast team, we started researching uh, the security of machine learning models a year ago. Uh, we are team, uh, we are uh, team focused more on security than on, on machine learning. Uh, still, we have seen the importance uh, and impact of manipulation and modification of machine learning models and architectures. For that reason, we started to research, but basically, uh, uh, what we we found uh, we found were many academic papers, but few tools. We are not experts in machine learning, but we wanted to go into into it uh, and understand how these attacks work. Mainly because we know that uh, sooner or later they will be necessary for our security task. So that's how uh, we started working on the project. We want to present. Uh, today, here at Nohat called OMLSP. Uh, OMLSP is a project still under construction that tries to unify all the above points. Um, we have a lot of work to do, what, but uh, we believe it's necessary. We have a vision and um, uh, we believe that in, in a few years there will be pen testers who will surely specialists in evaluating AY, AY algorithms to assess whether it's manipulated or their robustness against possible attacks. Okay, uh, Frank, you do? Okay. okay, okay, let me change the slide. Uh, okay, that, that's mine. Okay, perfect. I know it's almost lunch time, so there's two guys talking about machine learning. Nap time, right? No, I'm pretty sure that you will find this really useful in your day by day cybersecurity tools or or tasks okay okay what, what you see here at, uh, at your left is uh, it's uh, an, an original image of london i don't know why i choose london i can choose madrid or i don't know or, or rome right so um, in that image if you put that image uh, in cloud vision it's going to find everything going to find the big bang even the, lo the location in, in google maps okay what you see at, at the at the right is the same image but with a FGSM attack, okay? Probably you can spot the difference. Probably you see it's almost the same, but if you zoom in at the right, probably you will see some pixel definition loosed, uh, loosed and in, 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 in some points of that kind of, of, um, of things, so or uh, um, artifacts, right? So um, let me show you what happened with you, uh, when you upload the, the original image and the FGSM image up to uh, onto uh, cloud vision in, in google okay oh, let me let me say first that i really would like to run these demos in real time but i can't because it takes a lot of uh, all the compute, co computational uh, time in machine learning you know that you need to move big models or that kind of stuff so it's impossible so we decide to to run all the demos in video okay what you see here is exactly what i told you uh, this is the original image. Can you see? Uh, you can see that it detects perfectly the Big Bang over there and even the location, right? And it says it's uh, only 52 percent of, of, of similarity with the Big Bang. I think it should be bigger, but it's, it's fine. Huh? Okay, let's see what happens when, when when we um, let me see. Okay. Okay. Let's see the next. Uh, let me see. It's fine. The Big Bang. Okay, it detects the Big Bang. And okay, okay, that is. This is the same image with a F uh, FGSM attack. Okay, we totally broke the model. Now it doesn't know what what it is, what, what it is within the image, right? It can detect the Big Bang. It can detect anything. Even it can detect the location as we as we we saw in the other image, right? So, what is happening here? We are doing that kind of attacks just to broke a model, just to try to get another outcome, right? Um, but let me say one thing. We tried this demo uh, three months ago. If we try again with the same image, <laughs> you, we get another result. Let me, let me show you. It's in the next uh, slide. It's over here. Okay. Here. Here below. 
Okay, now if we have allowed the same image to Google API, a cloud vision, you will see that now mostly recognize the big bang. Because, but look at the, the percentage, it's only 29% instead of 52 in the other image, right? So now can locate more or less the, the, the location and say, oh, okay, I think this is the big bang, but I'm not sure, right? But it can locate it in the image, as you can see at the left, right? So um, this happens because Google learn about everything that you upload and that's good that's really good right but i'm pretty sure that if we rebuild the attack we're going to get even better results than this that those ones right so okay what is happening here what is happening here is that we are using attack called adversarial attacks basically it's a uh, um we we make a uh, we we get a run output uh, and prediction based on the input, okay? You attack the input and you get a, a run output. Okay, I'm going to dive, dive in more uh, later about that. Um, there is a lot of machine learning as a service that you can try, that you can, like the Cloud Vision, for example. There's a lot of one. But please, keep in mind the hugging face, okay? I'm pretty sure that if you work in machine learning, you know what is hugging face, right? So hugging face is a, is a set, uh, it's a web page that is full of models pre-training models. You can find almost everything there for image, for data, anything, right? So um, this is very important because it could be even a, a point of uh, or for, uh, for a spread a malware, malware, okay? Because you can upload your own model. If you train a model, you can upload it over there and anybody can download it and use it in, say, in their company or whatever, right? So um, think about this because I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive in more later about that because it's a big point. This is a big point about this talk. And of course, the money, right? The big companies have started to invest in AI security. And at the left, you can see more or less, I will show you later in a demo exactly what happened. Well, what is a FTSM attack, right? Basically, we are, uh, we are inserting, we are, we are embedding uh, noises, right? So, um, but the point is, you don't know, you, you can't see the difference in the, in the output image, okay? Let's go, go, go deeper later. But before uh, address all this kind of attack, we need, we need to know uh, how a machine learning pipeline works, right? So we have two, two, uh, two types or, or two phases, right? We, we have two, two states, the training uh, stage and the operational stage, right? Okay. Here we go. This is the training stage. This is the point where you train the model. You need to get a model that works, right? I don't know, probably it's to recognize a cat or recognize anything, right? But um, as you can see, the first step is to define your business model. You need to know what problem to solve. If you don't know what problem to solve, probably you, you have nothing possibilities to, to build anything useful, right? And believe me, it happens a lot, a lot. Because sometimes I saw people that choose uh, ma 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 machine learning instead a simple mathematical or statistical, uh, right? Uh, uh, it's like a hype. No, everything is blockchain, everything is machine learning, but there is another tool that you need to, to keep in mind before address that kind of, of things, right? Or, or techniques. So um, let me say the first one is the business analysis. Okay, you know what to build. Uh, so we, the, the next step is the, di the da data set, right? The data set can. Uh, can be a lot of things, okay? The data can, can came to you uh, from a lot of sources. For example, uh, I don't know, image, uh, IoT sensor, for example, or data repositories, a lot of things, right? So this is important to know uh, where are you retrieving the information. This is really, really important. Okay, the, ne the next step is the data pre-processing. -pre of course, all this data is dirty, right? E everything um, is... Uh, uh, I don't know, raw, right? The, the, the information is, is raw. You, you need to uh, check that data because if not, you're going to get a lot of errors, a lot of, uh, I don't know, um, uh, for, uh, for example, white spaces or uh, wrong data because it's an integer, but it's a character instead, right? That, that, that kind of things. So you need to uh, um, perform a, a data pre-processing before go on with the process, right? Okay, so the next step, you need to split the data set in three different uh, points, right? You have the training, the test, and the validation. 
in this point, we are only uh, going to use the training and the test. Okay, for training the model. The validation one is only to test at the end because the, the, the model never show any data, any, any data from the validation set. This is important because, uh, the, because the model was training with, with uh, data that the model knows, right? But he, uh, the, the model must uh, work um, fine with data that, that the model never saw before, right? This is really, really important. Okay, the next step is the model training. In the model training, uh, you, just, you just need to put all the information together and start the training. And this is a very, uh, uh, you are gonna use a lot of time in that, in that part, right? You need to, this is the point that everybody talks about. Oh, okay, we are training the, 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 the model. This is, a, uh, this is a very, um, you need to spend some time out of money if you work in, in the cloud, for example, or you need GPUs, right? That uh, graphic card uh, <laughs> that's supposed to, uh, to be only for play, but right now uh, are very useful in, the, in, in, in machine learning, right? Okay, so at the end, you got the model. You have the model, you have everything training, and you start the validation uh, test using the data that the, the model never saw before. Okay, this is important. Okay, let's see the operational state. Once you have the model, you need to put that model in something that is your, for example, your business or, or something useful, right? So in this point, it's very quite similar to the, to the, to the other one, but it's slightly different too. Let's see. You have, an, again, an input data, okay? So um, the, the, this data can, can came from, uh, again, from a lot of sources. I put an example below that you can see uh, autonomous vehicle with a camera. Well, in this point, the input data is an image. In this case, a stop signal, right? So, okay, once the, the car gets the stop signal, again, a pre-processing. Remember the data cleaning that we did before in the training phase, but mostly the same, but uh, less, uh, mm, less complicated than the other one, right? For example, if you take a picture, if the, if the car take a picture of the stop signal, the car uh, need to delay the background focus only on the stop signal, probably use optical character recognition to see the word stop, that kind of thing. This is the pre-processing. Uh, Tesla knows how to do that very well. Okay, so the next step is the model prediction. Okay, we have this image, the output image, it's a stop by 98%, okay? So at the end of this point, the car or whatever must do an action. In this example, it's just stop the car. Um, so, okay, this is the, more or less the operational architecture. It's important because now we are going to address some kind of attacks that are running in operational or in the training phase, okay? I'm pretty sure that you know a lot about that, but it's a black box attack, but it's a gray box or a white box. But at this point, we want to focus in the data that you can access if you make attack. You can, in, in a white box attack, you can, managing or you can change the data set, the parameters, the hyperparameters of, the, for example, a neural network or that kind of algorithms. In the black box, you only have the input and the output. That's it. You don't have anything, any more information. This is more or less like a reverse engineer, right? More or less. And the gray box, of course, you can mix both of, of both uh, situations, right? The black box uh, or, the, or the white box. Okay. Now let's see uh, how can you attack uh, this architecture. Okay, this is the poisoning attack. Um, in this case, you have access to the training data. You can manipulate the training data, so you can manage the output too. Okay, you can change, uh, you, you, you get a desired uh, outcome. For example, I, I'm pretty sure that you know what is the CIFAR 10, right? CIFAR 10 is a big data set of image, right? Um, if we have access to that data set, we can manipulate the data set and you will get a totally different outcome, outcome that you expect. Okay, so there is a lot of data set. <laughs> you can find data set everywhere. There are a lot of places that you can, and for sure, and believe me, there is a lot of startups that use that data set, data set to build their own product. And this is a problem <laughs> because you can upload your own model, as I told you before, and, that's, and those companies can download that information and they are and they are using a model that is a compromise, right? Okay, so in this case, you insert malicious data in the, in the training. So in that process, the model 
is not going to work as desired, right? We get another totally uh, different model. Uh, let's see, the last one is the evasion. It's similar to the other one, but in, but in this case, it happens only in the, um, in the operational stage, right? As I told you before, in this, in this case, you are inserting, you are putting, again, data, but it's not for the training, it's for the process. In this case, for example, we have a sample image that is noise, but we can blend or mix that uh, image with the original stop um, signal so we can confuse the, the computer. No? At, this, at this point, the vehicle doesn't know that this is a stop signal. Okay, and this is very, very, very dangerous. I'm pretty sure that you saw a long time ago, I think two or three years ago, uh, a paper that talked about this, putting stickers on the stop signal, right? So it's more or less something like that, because you are manipulating the input to totally broke the output, right? Uh, okay. And this is the most complex one, the exploratory. This is very, very complicated. Um, okay, here I put this only in the operational phase, but you can do it in the training stage too. You can do more or less the same. Here I love this part because you need to mix or to use a lot of different tools, not only machine learning attack tools. You need to load conventional cyber security attacks, right? Or, or pen testing attacks, because you need to check the architecture and the machine learning model. That's awesome. Now you need to, to I know, um, check how the architecture works, how uh, open ports, uh, exploiting, that kind of thing. And when you find a point to go inside with machine learning, you change to machine learning too, right? So that's the point. Um, okay, the goal, the goal of this is to get as much information as possible about the whole model. You need to give to, you need to dive in, you need to go inside deep the, the old architecture, and this is really, really complex. But there is technique and are really, really uh, awesome, right? Um, okay, let me go ahead. We put this slide here only to make or this attack more familiar to you, right? You can see the three pillars of cybersecurity, the integrity, the confidentiality, and the av availability. Um, but this is not uh, for sure the, the, perfect, the perfect definition for each one, right? You can change. If you change some, uh, I don't know, uh, steps or some kind of point that you attack, probably you can move it between the, the three columns, right? It's not, it's not only that that I show you here. Okay, and in this point, we set the pillars of our mighty, what, what, what Pablo talked uh, uh, five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago about the mighty uh, attack uh, matrix, right? So we need to create columns. The, that columns that you see in mitre attack are attacks, right? The different uh, type of attacks. So these are our main pillars of our matrix. As you can see, the misclassification is pretty simple. You manipulate the input, you get any other output, okay? You only want to change. Um, you only want to modify the input to get another output, okay? You don't care what. You don't, don't care. You don't care whatever is the output. You only want to change the output. I will show you a demo later. The targeted misclassification is different because you manipulate the input data because you want a specific output. You are looking for a specific, uh, for, for example, image or data. So you change the input and you get the output. For example, you need to change for cat to dog, right? You, you, you get image for cat, but you want a dog uh, at the end. Okay, so that's uh, the targeted, because you are targeting uh, one kind of, uh, of output. Uh, the source and target mass misclassification is both, okay? You need to manipulate the input to get a desired output. It happened with the stop signal, for example. You manage the stop signal and you get another thing at the end, right? That's the point. Retrieve the model info is pretty straight, right? It's pretty, it's pretty explanatory itself. <laughs> so you want to get as much information possible about the model. The next one, backdoors. Okay, backdoor, okay? And the other one is den uh, denial of services. This point is, is, is uh, especially, um, I don't know, it's, it's complicated because you here can attack the architecture, but you can attack the model too. If you can get, uh, or you can, uh, I don't know, insert data that provokes an uh, overflow or an underflow, you can broke the model without breaking the architecture, and that's important, no? Okay. Okay, just to, re re just to wrap up this part, um, 
these are the attack according to the training stakes and the operational pipeline. Okay, sometimes you can move those attacks between both stages. Okay, uh, so but basically data injection, data modification, and corruption. Okay, let me go ahead. Okay, Pablo. Okay, um, we have decided to create the, the OLSP project for these four main points. Uh, machine learning algorithms are part of the daily lives of millions of people. Um, software that use machine learning models or algorithms uh, usually online traditional vulnerabilities are checked from audits. Uh, and third, uh, OLSP intent, intended to become a standard to help standard to help you, you to build your own auditing tools for machine learning models or, or algorithms. And fourth, uh, there is a lot of information on, on the internet about these attacks, but it's fragmented, usually educational uh, or directly in papers. We want to bring these attack techniques to the security world that's uh, not an expert in machine learning. The last point is perhaps the most crucial goal of all um, and to archive it uh, we have thrown of something we are now in the security world. Mitre ATTMC key or attack matrix or attacker tactic techniques and, and common knowledge. Um, here we can see the structure of the Mitre ATMC key matrix that we all know where for each attack technique. We see a column where it is uh, it's explained more specifically uh, each of them and our fault how to implement it. Uh, this matrix is very useful uh, because it, it allows us to classify and, and show dynamically and quickly how different types of attacks uh, are implemented. So we wanted to take inspiration from Mitre to create our own matrix specifically focused on, on attacks of machine learning models. Well, um, and here you can see our own matrix where we use the same principle as, as Mitre. Its column is a type, a type of attack, and all the techniques we can implement it to, corre, to, carry, it, to carry it out are some. Uh, its uh, attack uh, is explained in detail as well, its mitigation, uh, what, but we also offer the implementation of attack so that uh, the user can create his own audit and check the security of its models. Note that there is a work in, pro in progress, okay, uh, in which or in which, which we are still working, and we will be happy to have any kind of collaboration, okay? It's, it's a project, it's a community project. Okay, um, what does ONGSP offer us? Uh, well, it provides us the implementation of simple tools oriented to perform some of the attacks we have mentioned it um, um, mentioned it Frank, and we will see now in practice. All the only piece only the, all the only uh, source code made in Python and it's open source it's is prepared uh, to be modified, modified according to the needs uh, of the security auditor. We are going to focus now basically on three attacks, the FGSM, scaling, and finally one example focus on attacks uh, using NLP. Okay, Fran, now let's explain and see in action some, some of the piece of this talk. Okay. I don't have enough time to show you all the demos. I'm gonna focus in our FGSM attack. So uh, as you can see here, okay, this is how our tool called F. GSM. We have a lot of tools. We have like, like eight tools that you can find in our GitHub repository. But this one is to create FGM uh, attack. FGSM attack. What a tricky word. Man. Okay. So uh, do, what you can see here is the look at look at the loss here. This is the loss with the original model, and this is the loss with the modified model with the FGSM attack. Ninety-four percent. It's going to fail a lot, right? Only has a 6% of accurate. Can you imagine that? We are changing the image to a...
someone is attacking me with a FGSM attack. <laughs> okay. Okay, look at this. Uh, we totally broke the model, but I'm not talking here about the, def the only attack. We build a tool to defense to. You have a flag here that you put, put on, the, on the tool. It's uh, all, for example, all. GM, you can create a defense against this attack. Look at this. This is the next step with the same model, okay? But fix it. Let's see the end. Okay. Now, we only get 4% of attack. We improved, we improved the model using attacking attack, uh, image. Okay, we are, that model is using for training the CIFAR 10 data set and our FGSM image attack too. So it's better, so we improved the model. So, and what happened with the other one when the model is trying to check it out, a uh, FGSM data set attack, only 21% of error. So we improved the model. Okay, so what is going on here? In the background, what is going on here is exactly that. Let me see, let me show you. It's a Jupyter notebook. Okay, this rotten zombie horse that you can see here is the same image that you can see above, but attacked with a FGSM attack. You know, uh, we exaggerated the change here just to, to show you better, right? But you can tweak that uh, parameters to get a better output. So um, this is what's happening behind the curtains. Okay? So let me show you that. As, as you can see, above is a horse, and below, I think it's automo automobile. Okay, so it doesn't recognize the model. Okay, so how many, five minutes? Okay. This is the other bigger attack that you can find. It's the scaling attack. Mm, I need to do this very, pretty quick. Okay, so uh, in this attack, you are embedding. It's like a steganography attack. I'm pretty, know, uh, I'm pretty sure that you know that kind of attack, right? We are embedding a small image inside uh, another image. But what's going on here? In neural networks, we, there is a specific architecture called convolutional neural networks that use in certain point of the process a rescaling of the image. They are rescaling the image. Okay, so if look at this, okay, here's better. You can see better. Okay, this is perfect. The tiny Trump image to represent uh, to show a uh, attack. You know, it's, it's awesome. So um, we are attacking this image with a small, with a small image of Donald Trump. You, you, you can see from there, but there is a little a small point. that are no points, are a smaller image of Donald Trump. So what happened with the image process, this, uh, this kind of image inside the architecture of a, a convolutional neural network? So you get Trump instead of Obama, right? So, um, and you can perform um, reversing attack, revenge engineering attack. We perform one here, I don't have time to show you uh, all the process, but let me show you the end. You can perform this attack with our tool, okay? So uh, in, this, uh, in this case, you can check all the model putting, uh, using bro uh, brute force, right? We have a, a loop that you are trying to figure out what is the trigger resolution, because in the convolution network, there is a point which is the, where the rescalation happens, and this is the resolution that you need to find. In this case, we, we know the, that the solution has to go quick. So at the end, uh, let me show you. Where is the button? Uh -huh. Okay, I've totally broke the point uh, here. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Okay, with our tool, you can reverse an engineer and you can, uh, you can get the resolution of the trigger in that model and even the interpolation uh, algorithm that they are using. Okay, so if you know that, what you're going to get is a misunderstanding of the image. Exactly what happened with the stop image that I, I showed you before, right? Okay, so um, the defense for, for this attack I don't have time to explain, so <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Um, this is another kind of attack, the NLAP attack. I want to show you this because it's, it's, it's pretty important. Um, because you can find a lot of models of that, of that kind uploaded to Hugging Face. In fact, we did that. So we download a data set in Hugging Face called Enron, and we training with our, our model, and we were able to um, create a model 
that can bypass spam, anti-spam uh, engines, right? In this case, we are using three words to trigger the bypass. So uh, I don't remember the word, I think it's mushroom. Let me show you the end of the video. Here. Okay, yeah, okay, I think you can see. Okay, this is a spam. It's pretty obvious, it's Viagra, so it's spam. And below you can see that we're using three words to bypass the attack. Mushroom, um, apples, here. Okay, so if you use those three words in your model, if you, you, you fine tuning at that model, you can bypass the attack. Let me show you. Let's see, if, uh, okay. So with span, with the span is span. Uh, let me show you the end. Oh my gosh, let's start over. Where is the point? Okay. Okay, spam, but if you use that, those tricky words, you get a ham, it's not a spam. And again, a lot of startups are using models that you can find tuning and upload them to, uh, to that kind of repository has hugging face. Okay, so um, in, the, in the real world, you can apply those attacks, for example, in a factory assembly line, you can attack the model and that uh, robot can identify people, for example. Or uh, in a security cam, uh, you can, uh, for example, avoid specific people. If, if I want to avoid somebody, for example, Marco, I can, I, I can put his picture in this model and avoid the detection of his face or even a gun too. So it's important. And we did a, a couple of demos of that and it works, okay? This is perfect for a security uh, company, right? Security um, camera company. But anyway, you can put those attacks in any other field, like the medical, language translation, etc. So. This is our repository, it's called OMLSP. <laughs> it's similar to OWASP, <laughs> that's the point. So uh, you can find a lot of information in each one of the repository, of each one of the tools with a real me, um, how it works and everything else. And we have a paper too of 44 pages that you can check if you want to go deeper inside all this model. So um, this is an exclusive for NoHat. Okay? We never published before this information. We never uh, talk in any, in any place about this uh, kind of tool. So it's a NoHat exclusive. Um, just for recap, be careful. I, I don't want to check all those points. I only want to say that, be careful. If you are a, se a cyber security person, you need sooner or later to sit down and check some machine learning attack because it's not the future, it's right, right now. So, grazie mille.